Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi again, this is the second presentation about optimization with single variable case. Having understood the basic as well as the use of the first and the second derivative test in optimization process, we shall continue by examining further the interpretation of each of the derivatives. I will end my presentation after I explain all the conditions needed in performing optimization without constraint with single variable case. The applications need to wait. We'll be talking about it in my third video presentation to be more specific. What is the interpretation of second derivatives? Recall a little bit about the first derivative. Remember, the first derivative indicates the tendency of the dependent variable y when the independent variable x changes. Positive first derivative means that when x increases, y also increases. On the other hand, if the first derivative is negative, increasing x causes y to decrease. Graphically, first derivative indicates a slope of a function's curve. Look at the function's curve in this diagram. We have the rising portion here and also here. Both have positive slope, meaning that the first derivatives are positive. Whenever x increases, y will also increase. On the other hand, there is a downward sloping segment here. Since the slope is negative, the first derivative must be negative. Increase in x will be corresponded with the decrease in y. So, second derivative interpretation is quite similar. Because second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative, it indicates the tendency of the slope or the first derivative whenever x changes. With positive second derivative, increasing x will increase the slope. Negative second derivative, on the other hand, will result in the slope to decline whenever x increases. Graphically, it can be illustrated like this. This curve obviously has positive slope. The first derivative is positive for sure. But if we compare the slopes or the tangent at points A and B here, bigger x results in smaller slope. The upward, slope, uh, the upward sloping curve is getting flatter, meaning what? The second derivative is negative. Another curve here also has a negative second derivative. The first derivative is negative as reflected by the downward sloping curve here. And relating to the second derivative, the bigger the x, if we compare the slope of point C and D here, the smaller the slope or the first derivative. For a downward sloping curve, smaller slope is shown by a steeper curve. When we have a complete curve like this, although the slope changes from positive to negative, the second derivative is always negative because the slopes are getting smaller and smaller from A to B to E to C and to D. We can easily observe also that with a negative second derivative, we have a relative maximum at point E. Can you evaluate the sets of graphics here? Well, it's just the opposite. With slope changes from negative to positive, the second, deriva second derivative is always positive because the slopes are getting bigger and getting bigger by increasing the value of x. Let's compare the slopes at point A to B to E, C, and D. They are getting bigger. And in this condition, it appears that the positive second derivatives give us a relative minimum at point E. Let's return for a moment to these two diagrams again. The curvature of the first function is referred as strictly concave, while the opposite, the second function, is strictly convex. Functions that have negative second derivative must have strictly concave curve, whereas functions that have positive second derivative must have strictly convex curve. With the same second derivative requirements, therefore, a stationary point of a strictly concave function will be a relative maximum, while a stationary point of a strictly convex function will be a relative minimum. How to check the concavity and convexity geometrically? What we need is create one or more line segment connecting two points on the function's curve. 
for instance, we can have a line segment connecting points A and B here, or point C and D here. And then we just have to compare the height of the line segment with the with the function's curve or the arc segment. If other than the two points located on the curve, the height is always lower, just like the line segment AB, then we have a strictly concave curve. On the other hand, if the height of the line segment is higher, like CD, then the curve is strictly convex. What if we have curve like this instead? Now the height of the line segment connecting the two points is not always lower, but also the same with the curve's height. In this situation, we have a concave curve without term strictly. So whenever a curve contains a line, we won't have a strictly concave curve nor a strictly convex curve. Okay, let's wrap up the discussion so far. Here are what we do in optimization process. In order to get the maximum or minimum point, there are conditions need to be satisfied. If a function is smooth or it has a continuous derivative, relative extreme values can occur only when the first derivative has a zero value. But it is still a necessary condition, meaning that not satisfying it, we won't have the relative extremum. But satisfying it, we may or may not get the relative extremum. So we need to we need the second order condition to check our stationary point. Relative maximum or minimum point will be obtained if the function is strictly concave or strictly convex. Since the negative or the positive value of the second derivative ensure the strict concavity or convexity, it becomes the second order sufficient condition. Satisfying it will give us a relative extremum, either maximum or minimum. Why is it not necessary condition 2? Because the reverse is not true. Strictly concave or convex objective function does not always result from negative or positive value of the second derivative. Thus, the necessary condition, uh, condition is this. Let's consider this objective function to understand better. By drawing the function, of course, we could easily find that the function is strictly convex. Hence, the stationary point is a relative minimum. But let's follow the procedure to check it. Satisfying the first order necessary condition gives us the stationary point, 0, 0.0. So it's clear. How about the second order condition? The second order condition is met by finding the second derivative. Look at this. The value of the second derivative is not positive for all x. It is 0 when x is 0, that is when x equals xo. What can we observe then? First, we know the objective function is strictly convex, but the value of the second derivative is not positive for all x values. Second, with the second derivative contains zero value, so without grab, it's still uncertain whether the stationary point is a relative minimum, maximum, or an inflection point. That is why it is a second order, necessary, not sufficient condition. We need to have another tool to further check it. The tool is the so-called nth derivative test. At the moment, I won't explain about the Maclaurin series, the Taylor series, and the Lagrange form of the remainder to derive the test. I will just go directly to explain how the nth derivative test works. Here are the procedures. We just have to find the critical value, xo as usual, then find the first non-zero derivative value evaluated at xo. Look at the previous example here. The critical value, the xo, is 0 after equalizing the first derivative to 0. And then, at xo, up until the third derivative, the values of the derivative are 0. The first non-zero derivative value at xo is the fourth derivative. So now, we can identify this. Our n is 4, an even number and the value of the derivative is positive. It implies that the stationary point 0.0, .0 in our case is a relative minimum. 
So to complement our summary here, when we can only satisfy the second order necessary condition, or when the second derivative contains zero value, we need higher order sufficient condition. So here's the rule. We use the nth derivative test as we just discussed. Okay, so that's my second presentation. I explain the application in my next or my last presentation about the optimization with single variable case. Thank you for the attention. See you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.